This is the fourth Honeywell pneumatic training video. It will build on what we covered in the pneumatic thermostat video and cover day night thermostats in detail. As we learned earlier in the series, a pneumatic control system must have a source of clean, dry, oil-free air at a constant pressure and of adequate volume to operate correctly. Before considering the calibration of any controller, be sure to examine the quality of the supply air. The air that leaves the pressure reducing valves is called main air supply. This air pressure is delivered out to each of the thermostats and controllers in the system through plastic or copper tubing. Inside the thermostat is a simple device called the nozzle flapper assembly. It provides a way to bleed off supply air to deliver a modulated output control signal in the branch line. This air pressure in the branch line is a modulating output signal that operates valve or damper actuators or pneumatic relays. Here you see the nozzle flapper assembly. This is the component that allows air to be bled off, reducing pressure downstream. The flapper sits over the nozzle and allows air to be bled off. Above the flapper is the bimetal. The bimetal is an element that bends in response to the room temperature, which pushes the flapper to a certain distance from the nozzle, controlling the bleed rate. Up to this point, we've examined thermostats that have only one bimetal and one nozzle flapper assembly. They are single temperature controllers, such as the Honeywell TP970. Two temperature thermostats have one main air connection and one branch line connection like conventional pneumatic thermostats, but they also have two sets of bimetals and nozzles, usually a set point adjustment for each. The air enters from the main line and a logic module delivers the air to the correct nozzle flapper assembly. The thermostat is switched from one temperature control to the other by switching the main air supply pressure from low to high. Three switchover ranges are available, 13 to 18 PSI, 16 to 21 PSI, and 20 to 25 PSI. Two temperature thermostats are used when two set points are needed. The TP971 is a day-night thermostat. They have a day set point and a night set point for energy savings. TP972 thermostats are also two temperature thermostats. They have a cooling set point for summer and a heating set point for winter. They are also called summer-winter thermostats. This training will cover how to calibrate TP971 day-night and TP972 heating cooling thermostats. For this example, we will assume a switchover range of 13 to 18 pounds and day-night TP971 thermostats, 13 pounds during the day and 18 pounds at night. This pressure change acts on an internal logic module which trips the stat from a day set point to a night set point. The TP972 heating cooling stats also utilize a similar pressure change scheme. The change in air pressure comes from a dual pressure regulating valve. The dual pressure valve, or dual PRV, functions like the single pressure PRV, except it has a switchover inlet, chamber, and diaphragm. If air pressure is directed into this port, the PRV will automatically increase its output pressure to the higher pressure setting. When air is exhausted from the switchover chamber, the valve returns to the lower setting. The air pressure that triggers the dual PRV comes from an electric pneumatic relay, usually called an EP relay. EP relays are electric relays combined with a valve so that an electric signal can be used to control air pressure. The Honeywell RP818 is a 24-volt EP relay. RP418 is the line volt version. EP relays are often triggered by a time clock that energizes or de-energizes the relay. A diverting switch is often used to manually switch a heating cooling system. In this example, the PRV has been set to deliver 13 pounds main air supply to the building, so all the thermostats are in the day set point. When the time clock contacts close at the end of the occupied time period, say 6 p.m., the EP relay is energized and the air valve opens. The 13 pound main air pressure is now fed into the top port of the PRV's diaphragm, causing the output to increase to the secondary setting of 18 PSI. Now all the thermostats connected to this air supply will automatically change their set points to the night setting. Another method of supplying two pressure main is with single pressure PRVs. The PRVs are connected to an EP relay, which has a solenoid operated valve that can operate as a diverting valve. The EP relay has three ports for pneumatic tubing. The C port is common and the valve opens to either A or B. When the relay is de-energized, it is open from port B to port C. So in this example, when de-energized, 
will have a 13-pound main air supply to the day-night stats. When the time clock contacts close, perhaps at 6 p.m., the solenoid is energized and the valve opens from port A to C. The 13-pound main is blocked and the 18-pound main is connected to the day-night stats. Now all the thermostats will switch over to their nighttime set points. Two temperature thermostats have two bimetal and nozzle flapper assemblies, so each of these needs to be calibrated individually. Calibrate the day set point with a 13 psi main applied, then calibrate the night set point with the 18 psi main air. Before you calibrate, be sure you understand the principles of proportional control. These were covered in the Pneumatics 3 video. The key point is that in heating, as the room temperature falls below set point, the thermostat will trigger the valve to open in proportion to the number of degrees the set point is from the actual room temperature. The room temperature is called the control point. The difference between the two is called the offset, and the change in degrees that drives the valve from full open to full closed is called the throttling range. Also remember that direct acting thermostats increase the branch line pressure as the temperature goes up. These are used with normally open valves. Reverse acting thermostats decrease branch line pressure as the temperature goes up and are used with normally closed valves. In the following examples, we will use direct acting thermostats, but it's important for you to know the type of thermostat you are working on. It's smart to calibrate the thermostat to check for proper operation. Because of this, calibration is often scheduled as part of annual maintenance. Calibration is necessary due to normal wear of components on the system. And of course, if the controller is out of calibration, it's likely that the system is not running as efficiently as possible and not delivering ideal comfort. There are two methods that are used to calibrate pneumatic thermostats. Method one is usually used and simply calibrates the output to an eight PSI calibration pressure, which is the center of a pneumatic controller's typical three to 13 pound branch line output. The second method calibrates to the spring range of the actuator. In this example, the spring range of the actuator is eight to 13 pounds. So the calibration pressure is midpoint at 10.5 pounds. The third video in the series, Thermostats, explains these two methods in more detail. Before you calibrate, make sure you're getting enough air pressure to the stat. First, determine which changeover pressures the system is using. And is it currently at the day low or the night high pressure? 13 to 18 PSI changeover is very common, so I will use that for this example. Check main air pressure by removing the stat from the wall and inserting a pressure gauge into the main air port on the exposed back plate. It's marked with an M. During the day, the pressure should be at or below the lower pressure, 13 PSI. Then change the system over to the high, night pressure, and check it again. It should be at or above the upper pressure, 18 PSI in this example. If the main air pressure is low, check for air leaks, crimped tubing, dirty filters, or an incorrectly set pressure reducing valve. Next, make sure that the stat is operational. A quick test is to insert a pressure gauge into the tap at the top center of the thermostat. Then give the bimetal a couple of quick flicks to see if the gauge needle bounces. Then change the main air pressure from day to night to check the other bimetal in the same way. This is a better operational check of the thermostat. It checks to see if the thermostat produces a full branch pressure output. Insert a pressure gauge into the branch pressure tap at the top center of the thermostat. Then turn the set point knob at least five degrees high and then five degrees low from where it was set. Verify that branch line pressure rises and falls at least three to 13 pounds. If not, the stat might be defective, in which case it cannot be calibrated, or you would want to double check for sufficient main air pressure. After you do this, switch to the other day-night main air pressure and check the other bimetal. This is also a good time to check the model of the thermostat to see if it is a direct acting or reverse acting thermostat. In the following calibration examples, I will use a direct acting thermostat. Be sure to follow manufacturer instructions for the type of thermostat you are working on. Here are the steps to calibrate a two temperature thermostat. Step one, you've already done. Verify the main air supply at the thermostat. To calibrate the day set point, make sure you are applying the day pressure, 13 PSI in this example. Next, remove the cover, if you've not already, and insert a pressure gauge into the branch line tap port at the top center of the stat. Then, Measure the ambient room temperature with a reliable thermometer. Do not use the built-in thermometer on the thermostat. In this example, the room temperature is 70 degrees. Next, turn the set point dial to the ambient temperature. Then adjust the small brass calibration screw to get a reading of eight PSI 
in the branch line. Note that if the built-in thermometer on the stat is reading incorrectly, it can be adjusted to reflect true room temperature. After adjusting the calibration screw, we should check and possibly adjust the throttling range slider button on the bimetal. Remember that the controller's throttling range is the temperature change that will cause the output pressure to change 3 to 13 psi. A 4 degree throttling range is illustrated with this line graph. In this case, as the temperature drops 2 degrees to 68 degrees, the pressure will drop to 3 pounds. An increase of 2 degrees would then cause an increase to 13 pounds. For this example, we have a set point of 70 degrees with 8 psi showing on the gauge. And we'll assume the thermostat is still set at the factory 4 degree throttling range. To check this setting, we adjust the set point dial to 2 degrees above set point to 72 degrees. The branch line pressure should drop to around 3 pounds. Next, we adjust the set point dial to 2 degrees below set point to 68 degrees. The branch pressure should rise to around 13 pounds. Repeat these steps again to verify that a 4 degree temperature change will produce approximately 3 to 13 pound change on the gauge. If a tighter throttling range is desired, then carefully adjust the sliding brass throttling range pin found on the thermostat's bimetal strip. Repeat the steps to verify the new throttling range setting. Anytime the throttling range is adjusted, you should recheck the 8 pound calibration point. Move the set point dial back to 70 degrees and readjust the brass calibration screw if necessary. Then, recheck the throttling range by raising and lowering the set point 2 degrees to verify the 3 to 13 pound output change and readjust if necessary. The thermostat is now calibrated. Be sure to set the set point dial to the desired room temperature before leaving the room. Remember, right now it's at the ambient or room temperature that we use for calibration. And that might not be the desired room temperature. Now we need to calibrate the night set point. First apply the appropriate night main air pressure, such as 18 psi. Then repeat the steps we just completed for calibrating the day set point, but use the night set point dial, bimetal, and calibration screw on the right. You'll use the same calibration procedures for other models of thermostats, and in fact, the procedure for calibrating the RP920A is surprisingly similar. At the bottom of the day-night thermostat is a small lever. This is an override lever. When the thermostat is operating at the night set point, this lever switches the room over to the day set point. If someone forgets to return the lever back to the nighttime mode, the lever will automatically switch over the next day. Another dual pressure thermostat is a TP972A heating cooling thermostat. It is used when there is one valve and one coil that is used for both heating and cooling, hot water in the winter and chilled water in the summer. These coils are called combo coils or heat cool coils and are found in fan coil units and unit ventilators. The TP972 is calibrated just like the day-night thermostats. There are two bimetals, so set the main air pressure at the summer pressure, usually 13 pounds, and calibrate. Then set the pressure at the winter pressure, 18 pounds, and calibrate. Most of the TP972 heating and cooling thermostats have only one set point dial. This is an example of a normally open valve on a coil in the heating mode when the coil is supplied with hot water. The normally open valve opens as room temperature falls so the branch air pressure falls as the room temperature falls to open the valve. Thus, a direct acting thermostat is required for heating. Combo coils use the same valve in the cooling mode when chilled water flows to the coil. So for cooling, the valve should open on a rise in temperature, just the opposite of the heating mode. So we need a reverse acting thermostat to open the cooling valve as the temperature rises. TP972 summer winter thermostats do this by using the main air pressure to switch the thermostat to a direct acting mode or reverse acting mode, so one thermostat, one valve, and one coil can be used to heat and cool a room. This concludes Pneumatics 4, Two Temperature Thermostats. You can find more information on Honeywell's pneumatic controls at customer.honeywell.com. Here you'll find brochures, installation instructions, and the pneumatic controls manual.